Hi everyone, my name is Amitesh and in this video we're going to prove that there are infinitely many prime numbers and we're going to follow Euclid's proof of this. Okay, so firstly let's just do a quick review. So a prime number is a number that is only divisible by one and itself. Okay, so for example, you can kind of start writing out the primes 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, etc. These numbers don't have any factors other than 1 and themselves. Now, as you can sort of imagine, as your number gets larger and larger, the probability that it's prime gets smaller and smaller. Because basically what's happening is there are more chances for the number to be divisible by something, the bigger it is. Right? So there are going to be more numbers below it that could go into it. So it's still a question that, that's very natural is, do the primes go on forever or do they just stop at some point? Because beyond a certain point, every number is just divisible by something. Right? So Euclid proved that there are infinitely many primes, so that the primes just keep on going forever and ever. And we're going to mathematically prove this. We're going to give a rigorous watertight argument. You know, it's not like law where law people prove things beyond reasonable doubt. We're going to just prove it beyond absolute doubt. It's just a proof and you have to accept the proof. It's not a matter of opinion because it is watertight. And of course, if you don't, you can feel free to leave a comment down below and I'm happy to discuss with you. But let's kind of discuss this. So this is Euclid's proof that there are infinitely many primes. And it is a slightly abstract proof, but this video is for you, you know, even if you have no introduction to mathematical proofs. I, I want to sort of illustrate this because this is one of the first fun examples of a mathematical proof. So we say this is a theorem, THM or theorem, T-H-E-O-R-E-M, okay, I've abbreviated as THM, is basically that um, the theorem states there are infinitely many prime numbers, okay? So there are infinitely many prime numbers that's the theorem. So how are we going to prove the theorem? So here's how Euclid proved the theorem. Okay, so here's his proof. So what he did was he basically said that let's suppose we have a list of prime numbers. Okay, so we're going to say that let's suppose let p1 dot dot, dot pk be prime numbers. Okay. So here p1 dot 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 pk is just, these are just labels, okay? So p1 is a prime, p2 is a prime, p3 is a prime. The subscript just says, okay, there are k different primes in this list. Now what Euclid is going to do is he's going to create another, another prime that is not in this list. And of course, if you can keep on doing that forever, you have infinitely many primes. So whatever list that you give me or you give, I guess you give Euclid, Euclid will find a prime that's not in the list. And that shows that there is no list of primes, so the primes just go on forever, okay? So how are we going to do this? So the way Euclid did this is, we're trying to create some number that maybe isn't divisible by any of these, right? So here's the trick. Let's just multiply them all together. That would contain every one of these as a factor, and then just add one, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to define a number. So Euclid says, define the number n, to equal to p1, p2, dot, 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 pk. So the product of all the numbers in the list and just add one to that. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna call this n. And now we're going to use n to create another prime factor that was not in the list. Okay, so another prime that's not in the list. So here's how that works. So the first possibility is n is prime, right? So there are two possibilities. So possibility one, so this is called case one, n is prime. So that means n is not divisible by anything other than one and itself. But in that case, n is a prime that's not in the list, right? We've created a prime that's not in the list because n suddenly cannot be any of the p1 through pks because it's their product plus one. It's going to be much bigger than all of them. Okay, so that case is ticked. Okay, so we've created a prime that's not in the list. Case two is n is not prime. Okay, so it's either one or the other, right? I mean, either n is prime or n is not prime. Right? I mean, it can't be, it's either one or the other. So either something's um, a cow or it's not a cow, right? I mean, so, or an animal, either an animal is a cow or it's not a cow, okay? So we have n is prime, n is not prime. Now, if n is not prime, that means it is divisible by some prime, right? So here's the idea, why is that true? Why is that true? Well, it's true because if it, it's not prime, it has factors. So you take a factor of it, right? If that number, that factor, is not prime, you can find another factor of that number, right? And you can keep on going and get smaller and smaller numbers. And that process has to eventually stop. 
to a point where you hit a number that doesn't have any other factors other than one in itself. And that's going to be your prime number that's going to divide in. Okay? So for example, you can do this with any standard number. Like if I have something like, as just, an, just to get visualized, if I have something like 110, right? You can find a prime, or maybe 115 or something. You can find a prime factor of it. Maybe you know five divides 115, right? But if you have something, um, whatever number, you just go on just dividing, you know, you keep dividing by something. Uh, if you find 110, you find 10 divides 110. Okay, you divide it by 10, you get 11. You know, 11 is prime. But you could also say that, okay, if 11 wasn't prime or if whatever number it was, you could just keep dividing until you get something that has no more factors. So every number has a prime factor, okay? So let Q be a, let Q be a prime number, number that is a factor of n, okay? That is a factor of n, okay? So now the argument is Q cannot be any of the PIs. Q cannot be P1, P2, P3 up to PK. Why can't it be? Well, if Q was PI, right? Um, if Q was PI, if Q was one of the primes, well, each of the primes will divide the product, right? I mean, so if Q is PI, then um, PI will divide the product. P1, P2, dot, 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 PK plus one, right? This symbol means divides. PI is a factor of that product plus one. But of course, we know that PI goes into P1, dot, 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 PK because PI is one of the P, P1, dot, 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 PKs. So when you divide PI into this thing plus one, your remainder will be one. And that, that means it, that's a contradiction. That's false, right? So therefore, Q is not equal to PI for any I and we have found a prime factor that is, we have found a prime number that's not in the list we started with, and so therefore there are infinitely many primes. So no matter what list that you give Euclid, Euclid finds a prime that's not on the list, that's the argument. So thank you so much for watching, you know, drop a comment down below if you have any thoughts, questions about this. It's an introduction to math proofs, um, you know, it may seem a little sophisticated and abstract, but I'm happy to help work you through this. You know, if you leave a comment down below, I'll definitely respond to as many as possible um, and do my best uh, to do so. And I'm happy to engage with you and you mean a lot to me. So please like and subscribe if you watch this far. You know, it means a lot to me. Spread the word to family and friends. My goal is to create free accessible math education worldwide at all levels of math. You know, at every level, this is for introductory proofs. There are going to be more advanced proofs, pre-calculus, calculus, algebra, trigonometry, etc. By liking and subscribing, you really support my mission to make free accessible math education and help as many different people as possible. So I'm wishing you all the best. Uh, it means so much to me if you watched this video. I love making it and I'm super excited to see you in the next video.